Yo, what's going on fellas? It's Sweat. Today I'm bringing you guys a list of 10 guns that you guys should bring into Forsaken. I wanted to make more of a simple list of weapons that you should bring into the DLC. These are ones that you'll be able to fall back on just in case you do not like some of the guns of the DLC. But obviously the point of the DLC is to bring new stuff to the game. So I recommend you go try the weapons out, that kind of stuff. But these weapons I think are always going to be viable no matter what DLC comes out. These weapons are very powerful and are always, always good to fall back on. I'm going to be splitting this list into five legendaries and five exotics just to keep it simple. Obviously there's going to be a list wider than this, but these are just my top five picks for the DLC. That way you guys can go out and try some of the new weapons of the DLC. I have a good feeling there's going to be a lot of strong weapons coming with this DLC as well that's going to overtake some of the current meta weapons that we use nowadays. But I'll be sure to keep you guys uh, tuned in on that, so make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Without further ado, let's get into the list. So my first pick on the list is the Midnight Coup. This weapon can be obtained by doing the Leviathan Raid. It used to be obtainable by the Sweeper Bot, but unfortunately he does not sell it anymore. This handgun is a great pickup, and I definitely recommend getting this first if you can. This will be on the top of my priority list. One of the main reasons I think this weapon is so good is because of the Rampage perk. Every time you guys get a kill with this thing, the next time you start shooting, it's going to be increased damage. And the other nice thing about this weapon is outlaw. So every time you guys get a precision kill, it's going to greatly reduce your reload time, making it a lot faster. That way you can keep spraying at enemies, hitting those headshots, that kind of stuff. Even with the new weapon mod changes, this I don't think this weapon is going to change at all. It's still going to be a very, very strong weapon. And it's very nice to have masterworked because you can, you can tap weak enemies, kill them, and make orbs very quickly with this weapon. Again, you guys can run whatever you want on this. This is just my personal preference, but you guys should definitely pick this gun up if you can before the DLC. This is a basically must have. Um, this, this weapon is going nowhere. It's going to stay in your primary slot, which is very, very nice. In the number two slot, I put the Iklos SMG. This can be obtained by doing escalation protocol on a week that it will drop the weapon from the wave seven boss. The very nice thing about this weapon is useful in both PVE and PVP. I think it's more prominent in PvP myself. I've been playing a little bit more of it lately, and this is a great secondary weapon that you guys can run. Typically, I like to run mine on Void, but it is Arc Burn Strikes this week, so I've been switching it around a little bit. Before the 28th, if you have one of these, I would recommend putting it on the Void Burn, because it is going to stay like that after the 28th. All, these, uh, all of these burn mods are going to be going away. For perks to run on this gun, I like to run Fluted Barrel just because, again, it is a good balance and provides the most handling possible for this weapon because this gun does like to kick a lot even on PC. The recoil is a little bit different on PC, but I like to have a lot of handling so my gun will sit still and I can hit my shots. The other thing I would put on is Threat Detector. That way you can get extra reload stability and handling when enemies are in close proximity rather than running Grave Robber where you only get a few bullets back every time you get a melee kill. This gun is also very great for creating masterwork orbs. Slaying a lot of low tier enemies will create you orbs very, very fast with this weapon. This is a very good sidekick weapon to have if it is on void burn with tractor cannon. I really like using this every time I use tractor cannon just to get a little bit extra damage if I don't have like things like a Nova bomb or void rockets to shoot. Coming in at number three, I chose the Perseverance or the Velikadean, whatever you guys choose. They're the same in my opinion because they're both 720 RPM auto rifles. Like the Iklos SMG, this is also a very good sidekick weapon, but I prefer to use this one more for taking down shields of like bigger enemies, draining their health a little bit. Um, this is also very good for doing skulls on Kallus. It's just overall another great sidekick weapon to use. So for perks, obviously you're not going to want the want to run the arrowhead break just because it is the same amount of range but you literally just lose stability in handling so obviously you're going to want to have the most bang for your buck here i think the most important perk on this gun is range so i definitely run accurized rounds over steady rounds just because if you put on steady rounds you lose a lot of range but you gain stability coming in at the number four slot i put the mananan sr4 the reason I put this gun in this list is because this gun is very accessible to everyone and you can get it via gunsmith packages very easily rather than the other good scout rifle that I like to use which is the Pallades Corrector. It is a Future War Cult exclusive and I do not think you can get it anymore this season unless you have some Future War Cult tokens sitting around. 
So perks to run on this, I like to use this top scope here just because this bottom scope is very chunky and I don't like the look of it, even though it has more range. But like I said earlier with the other weapons, I think the best perk you guys can have is range on these secondary weapons. So running steady rounds over alloy magazine is not going to be your ideal choice. This gun is very good at taking down enemies at a distance because it is a scout rifle, obviously. The main reason I like this gun so much is the explosive payload perk, creating an area of detonation on impact. I like to think of this almost as explosive rounds in Destiny 1. Um, this gun is very good because of this perk, and I would definitely recommend picking up multiple of these if you guys can. In the number 5 spot for legendaries, I chose the curtain call just because this is the best sort of DPS that you guys can get rocket launcher wise. Uh, as a legendary, it has a faster RPM and cluster bombs, making it really, really good for damage. Personally, I like to run all top tree here just so it's a good balance of velocity and your blast radius. And weapons like these pair really well with the tractor cannon, which obviously gives you a void buff every time something is hit with the tractor cannon. So if your friend's using tractor cannon and you're using this, this rocket launcher, you're going to be doing an extra 50% damage with this rocket which is absolutely insane. This rocket is basically a must have. And if you guys can, I would try to pick up two or three of these rocket launchers before the DLC launches. I'll get into specifics later as to why I said two or three of these things or something I gotta explain to you guys at the end of the video. So make sure you guys stick around for that. As a bonus, obviously I cannot leave out the Iklos SMG. This thing is absolutely insane. Another gun that can be obtained through Escalation Protocol as long as it is dropping on that specific week. A couple of things to note about this shotgun though it is going to be moving to your secondary or energy slot, whatever you want to call it, and it is going to be bound to a solar damage mod no matter what damage mod it is right now. As of August 28th, it will be turning into that solar damage. As for perks on this shotgun, I think it is important to run rifle, barrel, and threat detector just because of the two most important stats on this shotgun in my opinion are range and reload speed. This shotgun is meant to be aggressive and be reloaded fast just because of the trench barrel perk. Every time you hit a an enemy with a melee, you're going to be getting a 50% damage buff for a short time. So you're going to want to be dumping as many shells into the enemy as you can in that short time. With that said, obviously your reload speed is going to be important for that. And if you're a little bit ways and if you're a little bit away from the enemy, you're going to want to have a little bit more range. That way you can hit them from a farther distance for more numbers. Stability and handling aren't as important because most of the time when you're using a shotgun like this You're gonna be trying to stuff it in the enemy's face since it is a shotgun You're not gonna be trying to snipe them that kind of stuff Coming at the number six slot and the first exotic on the list is the huckleberry I really 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 enjoy the concept of this weapon just because of the perk that every time you guys get a kill with this weapon is going to reload a portion of your magazine and if you're focusing on smaller tier ads you're going to be able to kill a lot of them while still being able to reload as well as activating the rampage perk every time you do get a kill you're getting increased damage with the next shots that you fire so basically it's just a giant snowball of ramping up your damage this is a great, great, great ag clear weapon and does not get used, like I said, as much as I want to. I think it is very great for story missions in places that you clear a lot of lower tier ads and that kind of stuff. The other thing to add to this weapon is the catalyst. I don't know how it could get any better, but every time you get a double kill or a multi kill, you're going to be creating an orb with this catalyst. The other great thing about it is that every time you get a kill with the catalyst as well, it will overfill your magazine when you go to reload. So every time you get a kill with the mag that you're using is going to increase your max capacity for your next clip by three up to a maximum of 45 bullets. So if you kill five enemies with one clip, when you go to reload this weapon, you will have 45 bullets. Coming in at number seven and number two for the exotics is the Ward Synth Coil. There's nothing much to say about this weapon other than it's very good for ag clear as well for DPS on certain bosses. If the buffs are stacked correctly, this weapon can be used to kill bosses in seconds as as you guys have seen in previous videos of mine where we've killed Valcor in like three seconds, stuff like that. Uh, the one other thing to add about this weapon is the catalyst. If you have it, it can be obtained by doing heroic strikes. It's a random drop, a very, very rare chance to get it. But as you can see, I, I somehow got mine and I'm still working on it. If you do get it, it is improved tracking on projectiles. So you will notice a little bit better tracking when you do shoot this weapon. 
Coming in at number 8 and number 3 for the exotics is the Legend of Acreus. This weapon can be obtained through the quest that you get after the first time you guys complete the Leviathan raid. So the Acreus Catalyst can drop through Prestige Leviathans. It's a random drop chance and as you can see the Masterwork here is increased ammo reserves. This is actually really OP if you get the chance to unlock it creating a larger magazine for this weapon. I'm still working on mine here. But the main reason you're going to want to use this gun is to kill majors and stuff like that. More of the orange bar enemies, as well as over penetrating enemies. That's the nice part about this weapon is it can obliterate multiple enemies at once uh, with one shot. It isn't the greatest for DPSing all bosses though. I'd say this is more of like just a clear weapon for orange bars and that kind of stuff. Coming in at number 9 and number 4 for the exotics is the Sleeper Simulant, which is a D1 return. Uh, mostly because of this perk here, I'm not going to even try to pronounce it, and the overpenetration. So if you place these shots right, you're going to be doing a massive amount of DPS to the bosses here. You don't necessarily need to do the Ricochet shot perk to do a lot of damage to bosses though. Even if you're just hitting headshots and staggering your bosses, you're going to be doing a lot of damage otherwise. It's also great for clearing middle to higher tier adds, clearing them out like the orange and yellow bars. Another great thing about this weapon is the catalyst, if you guys can get it. This is this would be one of the top catalysts that I would recommend that you guys get. It is a random drop chance from prestige leviathan completions. Just because of the speed up weapon charge. So that means you're going to be firing your sleeper faster as well as having more ammo reserves. So you're going to be getting a lot more DPS just by having the catalyst complete. Coming in at number 10 and number 5 for the exotic slot is the Whisper of the Worm. I still like to call it the Black Spindle personally. But it is OP because of the White Nail perk. So every time you nail the full magazine of 3 shots as precision hits on an enemy, it will refill your clip and you will not lose any ammo at all. This weapon is very OP for bosses that like to like sit still and you can hit easy crits on them and it makes it even more OP with the catalyst uh, and box breathing. The one thing about box breathing is you need to sit still for a second not shoot to activate it. So if you have box breathing active you're going to be doing extra damage on top of this free ammo that you're getting with the white nail perk as long as you're hitting your precision hits. Obviously it's not going to do as much damage without hitting your precision shots if you hit a body shot. It still is effective though. This is a great weapon pickup and I definitely recommend that you guys have this coming up for Forsaken. Coming in as a bonus here for the exotics, you guys probably thought I forgot about it. You're about to go flame me down in the comments. Uh, the tractor cannon. You can't, you cannot forget about this weapon. This weapon is very, very OP. It went from one of the worst weapons in the game to one of the best with one patch. So for those who don't know, if you shoot an enemy with a tractor cannon, it will become more vulnerable to void damage from other sources. So if I shoot an enemy with a tractor cannon and then I throw like a Nova Bomb, my Nova Bomb will do 50% more damage to that enemy. And that applies for all weapons, supers, grenades, that kind of stuff. And the nice thing about the tractor cannon is you get a ton of ammo, especially if you have the catalyst. You do not need to have the catalyst for this weapon though. You have four in the mag without the catalyst and seven with. All you need to do is tag your enemy up once with this tractor cannon and let your team let loose on the void damage. The other reason this weapon is so OP is because it can be stacked with things like melting point and other damage buffs. So if you hit an enemy with a tractor cannon and a melting point, the enemy will be 100% more vulnerable to void damage and 50% more vulnerable to any other type of damage rather than just shooting the enemy normally obviously so you're going to want to be using this weapon to stack up your damage as much as possible this weapon is a great pickup and still does very good ag clear on the side as well on lower tier enemies launching them into a wall this is a great weapon for pvp as well if you are a pvp player launching people off the map into walls suppressing them and all kinds of fun but that's about it for this list, guys. Like I said, it was just a simple list. If there are other exotics that you you think will be viable for Forsaken, by all means, feel free to try them out. But these are just my top picks for what weapons you guys should be bringing into the DLC and are good weapons that will be that you'll be able to fall back on. The one thing I wanted to touch on before the video ends is the update on August 28th, coming up very soon here, actually. All your weapons are going to be locked to whatever specific damage they are on right now. 
For example, my Icolos SMG is on ARC right now. This one will automatically be set to solar just like the Escalation Protocol shotgun, but these two just in specific are being set to solar. But things like your curtain call are going to be locked to whatever damage mod they're on right now. So once the 28th hits, this thing will be stuck on void damage. So you're gonna wanna stack up on as many different damage types of these weapons as you can since you will not be able to obtain them again after after this update hits unless you use the new collection system but the one thing about collections is that if you do grab a weapon from your collections from season one it will have a specific rolled damage what i mean by that for example is that if you go to pick up a curtain call from your collections it will come out as let's say for example an arc curtain call and you will not be able to get a solar void one i do not know the specific damage mod that it will be off the top of my head but i will leave a link down in the description to a data mine that was found telling you what burn some of these weapons will be when you pull them out of your collections well that's about it guys if you guys would be so kind as to leave a like on the video it would mean a lot a lot of time and hard work goes into editing and making these types of videos so with that said if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys drop a hot sub for all the hottest forsaken content coming soon to you guys you guys know i'll keep you posted um, thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.